Hi everyone, so the second interview is actually going to be myself, and there's going to be more testimonials, more, you know, vlogs where I showcase the different features and sites and all of that stuff in Ethiopia, what the diaspora is doing, and interviews and all of that stuff. Many people call me Shiloh, and I was born in America. I lived in New York, and then I also been to North Carolina. I was also living in Georgia, traveling, different places. I had even been overseas before. But as far as being in the continent of Africa, the motherland or fatherland, um, this was my first visit. And this visit has really had a profound impact on me. And I'm actually, gonna, I say visit because really I'm a sojourner, sojourner on the land like the scripture says. So the goal is to see all of the world. But first things first, we have to fulfill these prophecies. And once we become, once we inherit this earth, like it says, the meek shall inherit the earth, then we can go to and fro, you know, like how they say, saying goes to and fro throughout the earth. And we see all of these jet setter lifestyles of, you know, people living like a G6 and going all over the world and, you know, influencers and stuff, sharing videos of them, you know, skiing at different resorts in Europe and then, you know, traveling through the Andes mountains or whatever, you know, this is something that we as the people of our creator who obey the covenants of our creator, we're going to be able to enjoy these things. But, you know, right now judgment always, it starts at the house of God. So first we have to go through our own purging and cleansing. And once we become the head again, we're going to be able to partake in all those joys and, you know, have a fulfilling, truly fulfilling eternal life. But like I said, we have to take steps to get there. And so going back to the introduction, when I was in the land uh, of America, you know, I was just doing what many people do, working nine to five and just pretty much living day by day like it's just a dream. Like everything is just repetitive and monotonous. Life not fully fulfilling. There's still more meaning. And I'm just not getting it out of that, you know, nine to five American lifestyle, you know, paycheck to paycheck. There are opportunities everywhere you go. And I've had opportunities to study in school, but, you know, I was. You know, I guess some people call us like indigo, indigo children or whatever, you know, people that they classify as having ADD, ADHD. I know there's a different way in which I think than most people. Um, but I know that I have a, a high level of cr mental creativity. But, you know, essentially the West, the Western educational system is not tailored to you know, people that are, like I said, maybe classified as ADD or ADHD or people that are right brain thinkers. You know, the West is mainly modeled out their left brain society when I believe that we need to merge both the left and right hemisphere together. So just all together, just it wasn't fulfilling. And I feel like I was looking at the machine and I wanted to take it apart, but I had to get closer to the plug. You know. And if I want to turn off the machine, I have to get behind it. So this wraps in with the prophecies, because right now all we're seeing is this this giant illusion that we're being hypnotized by. And, you know, the minute we unplug the machine, the illusion turns off and we're able to think outside the box more. And I guess probably because of my you know, the way I think, the way I am neurologically, I could see a little bit of, um, I guess what they would call glitches in the matrix. And it was definitely studying the word that helped me get there. And also, I would say the Church of Hell Selassie, I played a part, a major role in it, reasoning with, with enlightened people, people that are on the path of enlightenment, you know, and that really helped trigger me to finally snap out of the that illusion 
and be like, okay, the prophecies are not going to fulfill themselves if we don't if we don't do nothing. So some of us have to come together and do something. Maybe that's plays into the 144,000. So basically, I left out of America because I had already been looking at the prophecy regarding the second exodus, and I felt like it was primarily initiated during 2019 where we see COVID-19, you know, coronavirus 2019 pops up. You have the whole year of return, um, people going back to Africa, and, you know, that was starting to become popular, and then they shut it down. And, you know, people, because of the lockdowns, had more time to spend, you know, doing research, watching videos, opening their eyes, already questioning things regarding different things that the government does, different things that social media does, you know. And it's like, okay, so 2019, I had already started realizing, okay, I need to, at some point, get ready to leave out of the land. but. It was just about making the necessary preparations and ultimately figuring out where the land was, because like many, I've been led to believe that the state of Israel was the ancient biblical land of Israel. Because look, it's even in the name, you know, they get you right there. You want to find where a biblical land of Israel is? Oh, it's the state of Israel. You know, it's still around. Whereas when you look at a lot of a lot of nations in the Bible, they're not really still around. Like media mead mead i think you know or media and persia and you know kush and these names you don't you don't see all these these countries names now you'll see modern day equivalents of them you know babylon i mean you don't really see those names you know so there are some that are still around but most of them you don't see so when you're looking at israel you know we're just commonly taught by the church to believe that it's the state of Israel just because it's named that but what does the name have to do with the actual truth because a liar can give a name to anything that doesn't make it you know accurate it doesn't make it factual so when I got redirected through reasoning for brother who was telling me that East Africa is the most likely location of the actual biblical holy land of Israel because when you understand how the geography and terrain of Israel is mentioned in the Bible, and then when you look at the setting of most of the events, especially in like the Torah, you know, you see a lot of it is taking place in Africa. The terrain doesn't really match the terrain and climate that you see in the state of Israel. The wildlife, most of the wildlife, you don't see in the state of Israel. You know, so when I'm putting these things together and other tidbits of information, you know, regarding the people and just altogether, just about everything, you know, down to understanding how Ethiopia is a mountainous region, you know, has lots of mountains in it, just like it talks about in Jerusalem, you know, surrounded by the mountains in the Book of Psalms and other things like that, you start realizing, hmm. You know, it's more likely that this was actually taking place in Africa, but because of the stigma that Africa gets and then also just, you know, how the world looks at Africa and the elites wanting to, you know, control the narrative, they tried their best to keep Africa out of the spotlight. But anyway, once I did my own research, because he gave me, he helped counsel me on it, but I had to do my own research and I give credit to Brother Rambo, because he played an important role in this. Then from there, I started finding additional information that confirmed it. And it wasn't like confirmation bias. It was just me looking at it from a neutral point, because originally I had um, argued against, against that stance. But when I realized I wasn't really standing on a solid pillar or foundation, I had to become analytical and just rethink things through and do more research. So after all that period of time of going through the research and, this, and studying it over, and then again, you know, just preparing myself, I finally made the move and got the ticket to come to Ethiopia. And it's been a profound experience. So 
the next thing that when I'm looking at the prophecies and it's talking about the Exodus, because the way I look at it, an Exodus is not only a mental, physical, spiritual, it's all three. It's combined. It's a combination. So the Israelites coming out of the captivity. Well, first we have to look at what is Israel. Israel is a people. And it's a mindset. So we need to have the mindset and the mindset changes our lifestyle. And that lifestyle is a chemical neurological process that is also physical. So coming into Israel by leaving out of the captivity is coming out of that mental darkness where before we even get to Israel. And if you're looking at the prophecies, especially looking at Ezekiel chapter 20, you'll see that following leaving out of the captivity, you go, the people are going into the wilderness. And that wilderness, why? Because when you come out of mental darkness, you know, you're still wondering for a path. You know, the path is not yet fully light and shining. It's still like a shade of gray. So you're coming out of that mental oblivion of just being unawakened into a level of clarity, lucidity, and awareness. But that's a process. Day by day, as you make it to the end of the tunnel, you start seeing more and more light until you finally come out of it. Now you're in the land of Israel. Mentally, and like I said, it's even physically because it's a physical transformation of the body and even the cells in the body and the atoms and everything, you know, because who are the people of our creator? You know, El or Yah, the Most High, but them that follow his covenants, his commandments, the laws, the ordinances. So when we're understanding that. The people now, like I talked about, unplugging the matrix and coming out of it and waking up. The people now, they're emerging out of this mental darkness and they're finding out about themselves. They're finding out about the prophecies. They're finding out the truth, you know, and the truth will set you free. So if we're looking at it physically, like I said, I'm looking at it as, you know, beyond the name. But the meaning. And the purpose, like it says, the Most High puts his word above his name. So finding the purpose because the word was made living. What's our purpose while we are alive here on this earth to carry out the will of our creator? And the prophecies is the script that we must follow. So we're coming out of the land and we're going into Ethiopia to do what now? Well, once you once the people it says come out of the world um come out of the captivity and they go into the wilderness where they purge themselves and then they go under the new covenant then they are brought into the land and when they go into the land their purpose is to rebuild because it says the desolate places will now be inhabited a land of villages of like, you know, basically unwalled villages and, you know, bustling towns like we're going to come and we're going to be an economic boon to this desolate wasteland. And when I say this desolate, like I'm saying, like understanding the the multidimensional aspect of Ethiopia, that is multidimensional. You may look at it as a Baba and it's, it's a wonderful city. It's, Af Ethiopia has the largest open air market in Africa, and it has a lot of things to offer. But there's and there's other multi-dimensional intangibles that we have to understand. And that okay, that's on, just like when you go to New York City. You know, people look at the Big Apple like it's beautiful, but then you see the ugly parts of it. So you got to see the good and the evil. And we have to understand that we have a role to play in this and transforming it from the wilderness that it currently is right now into a garden of Eden, this paradise. And that's what we're going to do. So there's, I'm summarizing it, but again, these, I wanna connect the vlogs with fulfillments of prophecies because we need more people that are become aware, that are becoming aware, more people that are becoming conscious, more people that are being steered in the right direction 
more people coming into the land. Because like I said, it's, it's stages to this. So once it's enough, built up enough into your heart, you know, it's ready to be released. You know, all of that pent up potential energy transformed into kinetic energy, which is movement. Like Bob Marley said, movement for our people. So you have to come out now, emerge out of that chrysalis, out of that cocoon and take flight. And that flight is bringing you into Ethiopia so we can start building. So when I was in the land, I was looking at the matrix and I was seeing the glitches in it. And I was looking at the matrix, but I was so hypnotized and lose, um, you know, lost. I couldn't understand what it was fully. So when I was able to understand that it's this projector of illusions and nonsense and ignorance and vanity, I started realizing how can I shut it off other than going behind the machine that's projecting the image and then plugging it. I look at coming to Ethiopia as arriving at the plug. Because once we start building, the illusion is going to start to fall apart. Because when you start seeing other parts in the prophecy, because, you know, it's like you're looking in the future when you really start opening and understand the prophecies. You may not see it completely clear. It may be a little bit like, you know, foggy, like this camera is a little, you know, blurry a little bit. But you can get a good picture, a good idea of what's going to be taking place. And when the people of the Most High start coming together in the land, Babylon is going to start scrambling because the illusion is really to control a certain segment or demographic primarily because once they wake up, it's like Neo in the Matrix, it destroys the machine once they start fulfilling the prophecies. So once these people are no longer brainwashed and they're no longer hypnotized and they're coming into the land, then the, then Babylon starts scrambling and getting all, all the plans that they had in motion, like the final plans, because they, they war and they fight amongst each other, but it's never truly, truly the end, you know? But once the people are no longer fully hypnotized by it and that certain number of people that's necessary are in the land and that that number is met then the final battle is going to take place where the armies all these world armies that come together you know under the united nations and and so forth and work for babylon the beast system they're going to come against us but they have no power over us at that point so once they're finally defeated once and for all the system falls apart so that's why i said it's like when we're coming here into the land we're near the plug you know and the more works we start doing we start grabbing that plug and tugging it until eventually it pops out of the socket and that's it game over you know we we are going to finally take our rightful positions but in order to receive that inheritance, you have to kind of, we have to earn it. It's not just handed out. So everyone has a role to play. You can't just sit back. It's one thing if you're just un completely unable and you tried your best, you know, the Most High is going to be looking out for you. But if you have the resources to come to Ethiopia and you've been become, and you have become fully convinced, you know, that sword is at your own, you know, throat because it's like, if the, once the system falls and things become heavy and hard, then you have no one to blame but yourself because you knew. So I say that all to say is that this place is the, the next destination for us. We've been all over seeking a home and now we have the chance to come home, you know, and it's unfortunate that things had to be this way and that we have to work, work, work in Babylon because of the curses and the decisions that our ancestors and even unfortunately we still make to this day. But this is going to be it. You know, we could rest assured that once we put our hands towards building, 
and we get established and we start taking these desolate places and transforming them into paradise that's it for babylon we don't have to go through another captivity no more and we won't so right now we need help like c said we need people on the ground and we need support for the people you know who can't come share videos you know talk about you know what we're doing get other people involved try your best to get this information out there because we also want to get to the point where once we get enough when we become enough sustainable we can have our own version of maybe like a private charter planes that can take people you know who don't have the resources for free and bring them into the land and we can develop our own form of a bartering system where we use our labor and skills as a form of currency you know like we all can live in a egalitarian egalitarian utopian society it's really just the beast that has been keeping us from reaching that state because we're focused on greed and capitalism and a bunch of other unnecessary things but in order to emerge from capitalism we have to use some of its tools so starting these businesses and generating money and getting these donations and all these things going is going to allow us to turn this um the ideas that we have into reality and we we want to get everybody participating in this so you know it's good if you've been following this channel for a while you know to see the transformation going from you know talking never really seeing my face and now you see the face you know now in the land you know everything that I was talked about now becoming something more practical you know even the knowledge of the holy one the knowledge of the the lamb and the lion and turning that into a form of meditation of turning that into a form of manifestation you know and putting on the character of the personification of the lamb and the lion who dwell within me you know who dwell within us all because we are all our i and i so we're all baptized into one body which is giving us that christ consciousness because we also need the mind with the body and the spirit so it's all just coming together and as those things start coming together you start having all of these like inspirational thoughts and it's pushing pushing the the body into fulfilling everything that it needs to fulfill so you know that was a little bit about myself that's a little bit about you know the journey you know it's really what you make it because anyone can take something very simple and make it a very difficult task but like we know what christ said you know take my yoke for it is light all those who are heavy burdened and seeking rest so we need to we can put on the light burden we don't have to make this thing so this journey so difficult we can make it light when we follow our creator keep his com commandments and laws and when he's speaking to us and he speaks in many different ways some a small still voice some faith from like a friend like how he spoke to abraham and even moses and you know some through other people you know being the trumpet you know the the voice the utterance for them to hear you know listen to the, the commandments listen to the voice the will the wish all of that our creator is given unto us because it will not return unto him void so do it follow through on it and you will have prosperity and abundance you know any sort of bad things that i have run across have been through my own negligence but we are divine sacred people you know for the longest we have been going through tribulations but now once we start realizing the god within ourselves the temple of man how our creator dwells within us through the holy ghost the spirit that is within us and we start being able to activate all these things these energies within us that give us an unlimited potential that we can turn into kinetic manifestation there's no longer any tribulations we emerge out of that 
and we emerge as that out of that as a new creation. Our creator's divine timing is done, you know, perfectly in sync with human development. So as we are developing spiritually, mentally, physically evolving, these all of these things are coming into motion. So now, you know, regarding probably some of the things that I've experienced and some of the things to be mindful of is you want to you want to definitely coming into Ethiopia. Be aware that, you know, there is, you know, poverty and there's a lot of people that you're going to see asking you for money. And they even ask other Ethiopians this. So, you know, just, you know, don't feel offended or anything like that. But, you know, just be care, just be mindful that when you do have, um, when you are coming in, keep pocket change. Don't be quick to just give out, like, because here they, they have things in the forms of, like, 200 bill, $200 bills, or what they call burr bills, and 100 burr. 50 burr, 20 burr, 10, 5, and then they have the dollars like a coin. Keep 5 and 10s on you because maybe you may feel like pity and you want to help out someone and, you know, give them some money. But if you start handing out 200s, you know, you're going to start seeing, especially if you're not coming in with a lot of money, your the money that you are living on, you know, it's going to start to deplete rapidly versus if you're handing people you know, someone that may ask you for food or money, handing them a $10 burr bill or a $5 burr bill. Or when you go get something to eat and you have food left over, you know, you'll see people that will put the food in a bag and will hand it to, you know, a homeless person. So, you know, there's ways in which to be generous and be helpful, but just be smart about it and be careful with your belongings because you have pickpocketers, so always make sure that if you do have like pockets that have zippers on them, zipper zipper them up. If you have a jacket of a zipper, you know, put it in the jacket and zipper it up. Or you know, there are different sorts of pockets that have like you know, probably a pocket within the pocket, so that it makes it difficult for some way. You know, you don't just want to keep it, you know, your phone near that near like basically to where someone all they have to do is just stick two fingers in and can pluck it out you want to make sure it's deep in there secure you know be mindful of people watching you you know what i'm saying like just be conscious about these things and this is just for anywhere you go so it's not to become afraid because you know you could be walking you don't even want to be walking down the streets at night of like for instance bed you know and just have like designer clothes and jordans and you know gold watches and silver necklaces and stuff you know what i'm saying you're always like if you're going in a certain neighborhood or something you're going to tuck your necklace in or you're going to roll your sleeve up to cover your gold watch or you're going to you know make sure you don't go out with your best pair of sneakers because you don't want to get you know mobbed or whatever you know so just be careful you know coming into this to ethiopia coming into you know another country just be mindful of of things and again you know everybody's struggling everywhere so you know what i'm saying you don't have to take we don't have to take things personal but you don't want to get in a situation where you lose your wallet you know what i'm saying or your identification like passports and stuff you don't want to lose none of that so just always make sure that you are every now and then checking to see if these things are still in your pocket you know making sure no one's getting too awkwardly close to you you know because some people may try to brush up against you or get really close like always keep a distance you know what i'm saying and certain words you can say is like yell them which is no you know what i'm saying or um another thing is practicing i'm hard you know they have books when you get out here but sometimes the books are kind of expensive and it could be a little bit of a ripoff because if you have all access to online you know the internet you can find you know different resources to practice you know certain expressions that will help you get by because ethiopia even though it's like a, a multicultural, uh, especially in like the big major cities, multicultural, and you got a lot of tribes and stuff, the predominant language is still Amharic, you know, unless you're going to like somewhere, maybe even like if you're going into Jemma or um, Bahadar 
or going into, an, well, actually not Bajar, like Mikele, you know, Aksum and stuff. Like these different regions will have their own tribal language, like Tigrenya, Romo, you know, Guragi and stuff like that. But for the most part, the predominant language is Amharic, followed by, you know, perhaps English and then these other, depending on where tribal area you're at, their tribal tongue would be like the my primary language. So it's good to learn a little bit of Amharic because it'll help you get by faster. Even when you come into Addis, not a lot of a lot of people speak English. And if they do, they're not very fluent in it. So it would definitely help to learn the language. Uh, another thing is, is that you want to you want to build networks and when you find trustworthy people, you want to keep them, you know, but obviously if someone is not turning out, turning out to be dependable, then, you know, eventually you don't want to continue to rely on them, but you want to find locals that you can trust, but obviously not being too gullible. And that's again, anywhere you go, but you want to find people that you can interact with that can be helps to you because those people can direct you to finding a place to stay that is more affordable, for instance, because that's another thing I want to touch on is like housing, you know, or having lodging. You know, a lot of people, they come here and they'll stay in like the Bole area and they'll be spending $50 a night at a hotel when they got hotels here that is what's the equivalent, I guess, of will be seven. It's a place where they have for 750 burr, and that's probably like around eight dollars. So when you when you start realizing, wow, okay, I could find a place that is only eight dollars compared to staying at a place that's fifty dollars. Again, it'll it'll make the money last longer. So that because again, you we're coming here for a purpose. Like I said, a mission to fulfill. So you don't want to come here and be stuck where you spend up all your money after a month or two and then you go back to the states because you need to rebuild you want to come here you know and get and start running you know what i'm saying just take off so if you are understanding about how to make your money be be or if you're being wise and economical and the choices like purchasings and all this other stuff then it will allow you to have more money in reserves that then we you can start to use for your business because that's the goal you uh, one of the things too is that employment is hard to come by even for the locals so expecting that you're going to get like a job as a teacher or something like that is it's very difficult because so many other people are like already ahead of you on that, that are probably already, you know, by the time you submit your resume or CV, it's like yours is like 50th in line. So not to say that you won't be considered, but the goal should be, you know, we need to be entrepreneurial. So it's not an issue if we're building a community and we're working for each other, you know what I'm saying? As far as, you know, fulfilling these prophecies, but to just go out and start working for the system, you know, again, that's up to each other. That's up to each person. But my goal is to really focus on the prophecies. And if, if you are being led into doing that, then there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can use that to, to, to build up your money, but, you know, many of these places, they pay, some of them will pay the equivalent like of an American salary and some don't. And, you know, we have to think, you know, how long are we going to continue living like we were living in the West? You know what I'm saying? We come out of the West so that we can get out of the nine to five, you know, to to have a purpose, to have meaning. So, you know, keep all those things in mind. Another thing is, in addition to the lodging is food, you know, you don't want to be going to restaurants and spending, you know, what you're spending at a regular McDonald's, you know, you want to be mindful of the money and how, you know, being here in Ethiopia, when you come straight here, you know, for the people who aren't working, like that don't have like digital jobs, like if you're not like a software engineer, or someone that has some sort of, you know, gig job, online gig job, or whatever, online work, then you know, every single day you're losing 
money. So you want to find places because there are places out here that you can get a meal for only about 200 bird or less, you know, depending on the place. And again, being mindful of the place because, you know, some you don't want to go somewhere too, you know, run down because you want to be, you know, quote unquote economical. And then you end up getting some stomach uh, parasite or whatever or, or drinking or eating something contaminated. So you want to also be mindful of that. You know, but there are places that, you know, if I've eaten that and I've not had no diarrhea or, you know, bad sicknesses or anything like that. So there are places out there. And for around, like I said, that price range of around 200 bur, which is equivalent to only about uh, four bur, you know, or three bur or whatever, like around that price range. So it's very cheap and it will allow you to last in the long run. And there's even more other things to be mindful of, but I think also why we need to have a community network is for consultations, for specific questions that can be answered by people who have experience, who are experienced from being here in the land and going through those situations and emerging from them and then knowing, okay, you know, this is what I recommend, this is what I don't recommend. And that's a goal too, is to have that. So consultations for places to eat, places to lodge at. And then eventually once we get to that point where we really start generating that capital and we have that capital coming in, we can start our own restaurant. We can start our own, you know, guest house services so that people from the dashboard can come in can have a place to stay. You know what I'm saying? And since there will be a network for other dashboards who have started a place to stay, it will be like within the database so that, you know, this, these are the places that, you know, are owned and operated by diasporans or, you know, with Ethiopians who are working with diasporans. This way we're helping the locals out and we're helping ourselves out. Like we have to find a way to live in a balance because it's not about coming into the land and turning into the oppressor or trying to become a colonizer. What it is about is coming into the land to be in harmony and at peace and keeping the, our creator's commandments. So we have to do this right because I mean, we should look at what happened with the African American colony that was not being mindful of the locals in Liberia and see what happened with them. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a balance. So another thing too is um there are diasporans out here, a lot of diasporans. You know, I've come across African Americans, I come across um Jamaicans, as you know, the, you have a, a Rastafarian community that is not only just the Jamaican, it also includes uh, Trinidadians, Barbados, people from Barbados and other Caribbean countries. Because, and that's another thing I had talked about in the video uh, regarding the land grant that was given for diasporans to come into the land of Ethiopia and to build and become successful and have their their own establishments and become, you know, part of the the land again and connected to it is that the land grant was given originally to African Americans, you know, and then from there it was it was handed on to uh and branched out to other people within the diaspora. So we all have an inheritance in this, you know. It's not only just Jamaicans, it's also African Americans, it's not only just African Americans, it's also people who are, you know, from all these other different countries, whether you be from Honduras, Brazil, or whatever. So the UC, the Rastafarian community, I'm gonna also show videos and interviews with them because as you know, I, I consider myself a Helsalasia, which is, you know, connected with Rastafari. And so I like to work with a lot of the people, you know, in the Rastafarian community and we can do a lot of good together. So I will be sharing, you know, their works and what they're doing and, you know, participating in them because I think that that is how we all grow, you know, working together. And as the Most High leads us, you will, you know, give us our role, each of us a role in this. But, you know, that doesn't exclude also Hebrew Israelites because there are Hebrew Israelites here in the land too, which I also include their testimonials. So, you know, this is, 
Right now, we're all being perfected day by day. We're all going to come to the truth as long as we seek our creator. Regarding the supplies that are important to bring to Ethiopia, I would definitely recommend power bank, getting a power bank, bringing probably two or three phones if you can. Um, I would also recommend probably try to bring, if you can, a, a, a generator or something like solar power because there are electrical uh blackouts so you want to have like a, a generator going forward or you know have something a device that can store energy you know electricity and i would also recommend bringing cash because ethiopia allows you to bring up to ten thousand us dollars through the airport so if you bring it in cash that's also good because you never know with the ATM situation, you know what I'm saying? If your car may get uh, shut down due to what they perceive as unauthorized transac transactions, especially if you don't look like, you know, obviously some people will want to be confidential with their affairs, you know? So the bank may suddenly see Ethiopia, you know, transactions and shut down your card. And because now you don't have any cash on you, you're stuck. So I recommend definitely bringing cash if you can, you know, if you have that entire amount, I would recommend bring the entire amount, 10,000 US dollars on you. But make sure, you know, you, you pack it somewhere safe so that if someone is opening up luggage, you know, when they go through and the, the, the people picking up the luggage and loading into the planes, you know, and they feel something odd or strange and then they look and then they see all the money and they just take it. Like, you know, I would definitely recommend, you know, storing it in a proper pillet, in a proper place where, it's not easily found. Um, in addition to that, uh, or actually, you know, moving on from that, another thing is planning, you know, try to have an idea. In addition to like I talked about with all the other things like research, like learning a little bit of language and, um, you know, being mindful of you know, the situation regarding the electrical shortages and, you know, planning accordingly. If like you have like a job where you have an online gig job, sometimes the internet connection fluctuates, you know, unless you can get like a solid landline or something, a fixed broadband line where you can have like a dedicated amount of, a, of megabits per second speeds, internet speeds that is like well over 50 megabytes per second. If you're just using like one of those regular, um, routers or whatever the adapters that you can you know carry around and it, like it gives you like the this wi-fi whatever portable wi-fi it that fluctuates it's not always strong you know so the speed is more so consistent around 10 megabytes per second range but unless you can get something like you know spend more money and get like a, a like i said before a bro fixed broadband uh landline you know, internet speeds are not going to be that fast. So just that's something to be mindful of. And for a, a lot of people, sometimes we just get like, you know, 4G on their phone and then get a hotspot, use their phone as a hotspot. Like I can use my phone as a hotspot, but I still got the portable router, even though the speed isn't that great because, you know, it does give me a little bit faster speed than what I normally get with my phone. So, you know, that's one slight advantage, but the speed is, Again, not that that fast, you know, if you're looking for 30 to 50 or and above, it's really hard to come by. Like I said, um, another thing is planning, you know, you want to start planning on what you want to do. Like business wise, and that's another thing that where it comes into a uh, great in addition to the you know, getting help with getting set up like with your SIMS card so that you can be able to, you know, make calls and stuff and getting set up with lodging and stuff. Consultation is going to be key. Like we have to network and, you know, we have people out here that we work with, you know, that we can help, you know, facilitate the transition from America to Ethiopia and make it easier, you know, with guiding you on this because, you know, people will come in and maybe they want to start a business, but they don't know what type of business or what is required to start the business or what is involved and what the investment amount, like having, 
you know, brotherhood and sisterhood here helps you with acquiring those information. And if they don't have it directly, they can get it for you. You know what I'm saying? So it allows you to to hit the ground again, running, because it's like you come in here looking to start a business. Um, and some people can waste a lot of time, months, you know what I'm saying, before they finally have that light bulb going. And it's like, okay, this is the business I want to do. I finally got the information that I needed. But, you know, because of all the stuff that I mentioned, you know, mistakes, now they got to go back to America and reset. You know what I'm saying? So this helps reduce having to reset. Instead, you come in here into the land to fill the prophecies and you can just get the ball rolling. So we can help with that and getting you that information and everything that you need so that it could be, again, a smooth transition. And yeah. Um, another thing regarding people who are unsure because maybe they've read stuff online about Ethiopia, you know, like C said in the interview, come here yourself, you know, and form your own opinion, form your own idea, understanding that, you know, the scripture and the prophecy does say that this land had been taken through the sword, pestilence and famine. So what are you expecting? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're expecting a red carpet? That's not going to happen. You know, you're expecting the, the government to give you everything you want. You know, kind of like they tried to do the photo ops for Ghana, even though that people are finding out that even that wasn't all that it was cramped, it was played out to be. But that's not going to happen because it's like the whole world commits fornication with the harlot and the beast, it says in the Bible. Ethiopia is not anything different. You know, the beast is the world. It Well, the beast takes over the world. So we just have to be mindful and cognizant of that. It's like everything we're going out here to do, the beast does not want you doing. But you can't live in fear because if you live in fear, again, I mean, go back to living that lifestyle. Has anything really gotten better for you? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to be the change. So we all have to play that role. And like I said, when we were following the most high, he'll put that divine protection. He'll put a hedge around us and block evils from us. You know what I'm saying? Even if you may go through a certain situation, you'll never be killed. You'll never be maimed. You know what I'm saying? You will emerge out of it. So that's about following and moving through faith. You know what I'm saying? And keeping the laws and, and obeying our creator. Cause like I said, every, Everything that I've went through that was negative, it was always because of the decisions that I've made, wrong decisions. So, so as we start following and keeping with the most high, he's going to guide, our creator will guide us, you know, on the right path. If people want to, like see, I said, you know, we're going to put a list of different things that if you want to send, you know, to, to help us out, you know, put links so that people can send, whether it be monetary donations or want to you know send us over like equipment like through like an amazon wish list and you know purchase and have something and items that we need sent over here you know like i that would be very helpful but the major thing that i'm really also looking for is and this is foremost is the people with the right mindset you know we don't need people that are you know not trustful, you know, people that are not dependable, people that are, you know, have alternative interior motives and are not looking to build. You know, we want people that are looking to build. Obviously, we know that, you know, when you read the script, the, the prophecies that the Most High, our Creator, will save the tents of Judah first so that the inhabitants of Jerusalem or Jerusalem and the house of David will not magnify themselves against them. So these are the people who are primarily poor, poorer people. So we may not, we know that not everybody's going to have like riches and those things are great if people do have those financial resources. But the biggest thing is the labor and the skills, you know, and people that are obedient servants of our creator that want to fulfill the prophecy with those. We can really get moving because having a generator may be great, but if we have someone who knows, you know, electrical engineering or that knows how to, you know, build machines that are powered off of scalar energy or free energy or whatever, that's way more, that's even bigger. You know what I'm saying? 
you know, teach it. If you give a man a fish, that's one thing. But if you teach him how to fish, then that's another thing. Because those are skills that are transferable now, you know, that we can teach and even start our own schools. So there's a lot of things that we can really get done when it comes to, again, the planning of it. Because if people have come in here with business ideas, I want to start a restaurant. I had a restaurant in America and, you know, I went ahead and, you know, now I want to uh, transition on and leave out of the West. I like to open up a restaurant here in Ethiopia. Or maybe they never opened up a restaurant before, but they've been doing a lot of research into it and they would like to, or they hadn't even done research on it, but, you know, they want to, and they're really passionate and motivated for it. And they have the funds to open one up. So there's just a lot of things that we can build and we can do, you know, when we have people and when, you know, as we get the people and we're getting the resources to start making things happen. There's not a lot of Ethiopian blogs from the diasporans. You know, and that's for different reasons, but we want to get more, uh, more, more participation. We want to get more content out there so that we can not so much like move away from West Africa because West Africa is still Africa and we want to expand, but the return center is Ethiopia because this is where the land, the kingdom the temple is located at. So we want to get first this new year of return or, you know, this have this second exodus really kick off with flights, waves of diasporans coming into Ethiopia and building a community. This is going to be very key. All right, one love.